What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh from the Farm Fungi. I'm here in Sedalia, Colorado, and today I wanted to talk about breeding Cordyceps militaris mushrooms. So you can see right here, I've got a fresh batch that is ready for harvest. And this is a third generation from a progenitor strain that I was gifted a few years back. So my, sto my story or so my journey with cordyceps mushrooms started about four or five years ago when I first started hearing about the benefits and um, most interestingly, the stimulant or um, I guess the, uh, the met metabolism aid that comes from the cordyceps mushroom. So um, traditionally, Cordyceps grows on insects in the wild, but there are a few commercial strains available. And now there's some strains that I bred myself that do grow on rice. Um, I also use a, a supplement. I can post links and I'll have more information about the technical aspects about growing cordyceps mushrooms. I'm making a video on the actual steps that I do um, to procure new strains but this video i kind of wanted to focus on the difficulties of breeding cordyceps mushrooms and kind of the uh, challenges that i face along the way of kind of boiling down my new method okay, so anyone who attempts to grow cordyceps should know that they are not like any other mushroom in gourmet cultivation um, in my opinion, they're one of the more difficult mushrooms to grow just because they require very strict um, environmental conditions as well as nutrient conditions um, compared to some of the other mushrooms that I grow like lion's mane and oyster mushrooms. So when I first was gifted a, a strain of cordyceps, um, I tried a few different methods and it took me a long time just to have some success. But when I finally did get that first beautiful flush of cordyceps, I went back to that culture and tried to replicate it at a bigger scale, but I wasn't getting the same results. So one of the difficult aspects about cordyceps and militaris mushrooms is that they typically senesce very quickly. So that means that when you constantly um, are transferring your culture, it will degrade and mutate uh, relatively quickly compared to other strains like oyster mushrooms or um, any of the other gourmet mushrooms that I typically cultivate. So that being said, uh, my natural instinct at first was to try to take a spore print of a cordyceps. So I got out my Petri dish, I harvested a fruiting body that was already mature and releasing spores and I did get a decent spore print. However, every time I tried to go back to spores and um, germinate those on the petri dish, nothing happened. So my personal experience is that the spores from cordyceps are very delicate and fragile. Therefore, you need to you utilize them in real time as they're being released from the mushroom. So I do have a video um, that I did back in January 2022, I believe, or 2023, um, about how to breed cordyceps mushrooms. Um, I did also do a hyper breeding video. So both of those techniques work really well, but ultimately the best way that you can breed cordyceps is by isolating spores in real time because of how fragile they are. Um, so there's a few techniques to do that. Basically, you would harvest a fresh cordyceps mushroom, attach it to the surface of a petri dish, and then over the course of a few hours, when you start to see that silhouette of spores form, it's time to get out the microscope. So it's best to use um, you know, a lower resolution microscope. They also make like a camera ones that are just based on really high pixel camera lenses, but you need a microscope that can detect an, a single ascospore. So the trick is that when you're 
And when you have your mushroom that's releasing spores and you start to see the silhouette, you're going to want to go to the outer region of that petri dish. And that allows you to isolate single spores. So I use a scalpel. You can also use a loop or you can even puncture it with a tiny micropipette as like a little suction cup. But you're going to want to go to the outer edge where you can see clearly defined ascospores. And then you can isolate those, get them to grow out into slants or petri dishes. And those would be monokaryonic cultures. So they're going to have half the DNA material that it takes to um, produce a, a fruiting body. So once you have established a bunch of monokaryonic cultures, you're going to have to systematically cross those together to form a dicaryon. So in cordyceps, there's a few different mating types that are compatible. So over the past 14 months, I did end up getting some really good monokaryons that now are in my library. I can go in future um, breeding projects and kind of introduce those stronger ones to get better strains, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to do a more detailed video on this. I kind of wanted to just cover some of the challenges of breeding cordyceps and some of the questions um, that not a lot of people will answer on the forums. Maybe there's not enough understanding about this, but I'm kind of learning as I go anyway. So if you have any questions, comment below. Give us a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video about breeding cordyceps, check out our other videos, hyper breeding cordyceps and the best ways to breed cordyceps and stay tuned. I'm going to be doing my micro well breeding process pretty soon here. I've got a lot of footage that I have to go through, but I kind of wanted to update you guys. We do have some new phenotypes on our Etsy shop. So if you're interested in fresh cultures um, and then also I'll post a link for my recipe, which is just two scoops, one scoop of rice, one scoop of substrate, and about 30 mils of water per jar. Super easy recipe if you want to get cordyceps mushrooms. Um, it's one of my favorite mushrooms to grow these days, especially in the down season over winter. All right, guys, thanks again for watching this video on cordyceps mushrooms. Stay tuned, and until next time, much love.